you know, we've been we've been hearing a lot about the era of tech bio tonight. It's been uh, it's been really really exciting. And one of the things that I love is watching all of the advancements of all of the companies in the field. I noticed Jennifer talked about at least ten or fifteen of her colleagues tonight from different institutions, from from different places. And I think one thing we do poorly in the biopharma industry, the tech bio industry, is to lift each other up. And so one of the things that I, I really hope is that as an industry moving forward, we can bring some of that collegiality, we can hold each other accountable, but we can also kind of help lift the tide, uh, maybe act a little bit more like Jennifer and call out our colleagues. And in that spirit, tonight we've invited a number of companies who have joined us. They're here talking about their technology, their companies we think are just freaking awesome and super, super cool, and they'll be over in the corner. Please go after this, get to know them, hear what they're doing, uh, and learn a little bit about what we see as the future of tech bio, not just at Recursion, but beyond. So I'm gonna be very brief here, but you heard so much tonight about world models, about virtual cells, about all these different components of tech bio. And I think what we have believed for the last 11 years at Recursion as we've been building is that what you have to do is build data sets as, as Kimberly shared. Those data sets have to be really, really high quality and they have to have scale. They have to be horizontal data sets that span not just one disease at a time, but the entire genome, millions of chemicals, uh, in some ways a little bit, maybe kind of like what, what Tony was saying. Um, maybe not quite. I'm stretching there, I'm stretching there. Uh, but at the end of the day, what that looks like at Recursion and many other places, it, it looks like the true combination of the wet lab and the dry lab side by side. It's moving to a place where as we generate these, these data sets, these, these representations of the real world to the tune of half a billion experiments, on the computational side, we're building world models that represent those. And if we are successful in building those world models, at some point, we get a transition, and Kimberly and I did not coordinate this. This is just the direction that this field is going. At some point, we start to see this transposition where the world model becomes a virtual cell, and then of, instead of the wet lab supporting the dry lab, the dry lab becomes the engine for the hypothesis, and the wet lab becomes the validation tool. And I think that we are upon the moment where we're starting to see this transposition in certain areas of biology, and that's really, really exciting. And we believe that there are really three layers that are gonna be essential, many sub-layers, but at the highest level, three layers that will be essential in order to build this virtual cell. And that top layer is the pathway level, and that's what we've been working on primarily for the last 11 years, hundreds of millions of perturbation experiments, knocking out every gene in, uh, every gene in the genome, adding millions of different chemical compounds in all of these different cellular contexts, and bringing omics data from phenomics to transcriptomics, to proteomics, to invivomics, across that entire stack. And of course, there's been incredible work and a few Nobel Prizes in the protein layer. We have our colleagues at Google, DeepMind, Isomorphic, who've been building incredible advances, and now many other labs that are building open source models of these tools as well. And this protein layer is becoming accessible to all of us, which is fantastic and incredibly exciting. And then there's this atomistic layer. And we're not ready to share all of it yet, but our teams, as we've combined with Accenture and brought in the QM and MD tools from that group with our AI and computational tools, will in the coming months be able to share some of the work we're doing there. And as was shared before, it's not any one, you know, as Dean shared, it's not just cellular imaging that's gonna get us a new medicine. It's bringing together so many different algorithms and representing biology and chemistry in its full complexity. And I hope over the coming years, all of you see this shift when we move in the direction of virtual cells. And hopefully Recursion is one of many companies that's on the forefront of being able to represent biology and chemistry in this way. Because if we do, we'll be able to actually make a difference for patients. Patients are the ones who are waiting. And my last ask before you all go enjoy each other's company tonight, meet some of the companies in the, in the room over here, is that we all lift each other up. We all embrace a little bit of boldness. You know, there's so much conservatism in our industry for the right reasons, because we're doing experiments in human beings when we get in the clinic, and it matters that you are being very, very cautious there. 
But at the same time, I think we could use a little bit more boldness. We could, we could use a little bit more courage to go after the big swings because we are an industry with so much potential for impact and so many incredible medicines, but there's so much more we can do. And if we could get to the place where we had virtual cells, we can get to the place where, as Alex said, it's not tech bio, it's just bio because the tech is ubiquitous. I think all of us would wanna get there faster. I don't think there's anybody in this room that wouldn't wanna get there faster. And so I hope that we do it together because at the end of the day, there's patience waiting. So with that, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Please spend your time together in the rooms outside. Please get to know the panelists. Thank you all so much and have a fantastic evening. Uh, I